Okay, so last lesson we looked at some uh, powerful and influential groups opposed to the Weimar Republic and explored reasons why. The judiciary, for example, senior members of the army and the police. Let's look now at another political party that was also opposed to Weimar democracy, the Nazi party. We'll explore what the Nazis uh, believed in and what they said they believed in. Uh, and what was Hitler's role in the early Nazi party? Well, uh, Hitler and the uh, <laughs> excuse me, Hitler and many other of the early members of the German Workers' Party, which would become the Nazi Party, many were ex-soldiers. They, they were bitter and resentful. Uh, many had fought and survived in the Great War. You can see Hitler over here with his uh, pre-toothbrush moustache, and. Um, Many, in, in, during the German Revolution, had fought for the Freikorps, uh, crushed the Spartacist Revolt and the Bavarian Socialist Republic, for example. Uh, they had then seen their careers end due to the Treaty of Versailles. Remember, the German army was reduced to 100,000. And many were bitter about defeat and swallowed the Dolchtos myth, the myth of the stab in the back, blaming Jews and socialists for the German defeat. Let's have a look at Hitler's early life. You can see him in the picture there in World War I. I'm not sure if that's his dog or not, the one that got blown up in the trenches of World War I. However, that's not particularly relevant. Let's move on. So he's born in Braunau in Austria in 1889. Again, I have to apologise to any German speakers. I know my pronunciation is abysmally bad. Rejected from art school in Vienna. Quite a competent painter of buildings, but uh, I think he was rejected on the basis of not being able to paint people very well. For a while, in fact, uh, when his inheritance ran out, he was homeless, essentially, on the streets of uh, Vienna, selling his paintings to try and get by. In 1914, although he was an Austrian, he joined the German army at the outbreak of the First, Vol First World War. He called it an unforgettable experience, which, I mean, I've been lucky enough never to have experienced armed combat, but I'm sure that, uh, I'm sure that, ex that description is merited. He, he actually did win the Iron Cross um, during the First World War, I think he was very proud of. So let's move on to Nazi ideas and policies. Um, in 1918, uh, Hitler was actually a surveillance officer. He was employed by the army to spy. There were many nationalist groups at the time in Bavaria, and one of them was the German Workers' Party. And Hitler, as I say, was employed to spy on them and report if they were a danger. So the German Workers' Party, as you can see actually in the picture there, he is member number 555. Actually, I think he was only member 55, but they added the extra five to look like the party had more members. Anton Drexler, the chap you can see on the right with the glasses and the moustache, he was the leader of the German Workers' Party. Hitler actually then uh, stopped being a spy. He liked what the German Workers' Party was saying. And in April of 1919, he actually joined the party. Uh, qu quite early on, his talents for public speaking were recognised and he was put in charge of recruitment and propaganda. So, already said he was a good speaker. He started off speaking to groups of hundreds and then went on to speaking in groups of thousands, often in beer halls. The party was renamed the German Workers... Sorry, <laughs> excuse me. The German Workers' Party, in February of 1920, published its 25-point programme, basically a political statement of beliefs, and we'll explore some of those in more detail in a moment. Part of it was written by Hitler with Drexler and others, so, you know, he's, he's got a fairly influential role in the early days of the party here, and in 1920, the party was renamed from the German Workers' Party to the National Socialist German Workers' Party, uh, referred to uh, shorthand as the Nazis. And Hitler actually manoeuvred his way to take over the party in 1921. Drexler was essentially kind of forced to resign and suggest Hitler as to, to be his replacement. Uh, so, it's an odd name when you look at it, the National Socialist German Workers' Party. On the one hand, nationalism is often associated with right-wing uh, ideas, whereas on the other hand, socialism is associated with left-wing ideas. Well, the Nazis from the very beginning tried to appeal to both sets of German society. If you look at the picture on the right, this is actually propaganda from, from, from a bit later on. Uh, work and bread, that says. So that's probably appealing to your, your working class, perhaps unemployed, uh, left-wing voter. The image on the right is clearly sort of a nationalist image of a resurgence of the German eagle. So right from the early days, they're trying to appeal both to the left-wing and the right-wing, and it's the national socialists. So let's have a look at some of the points, uh, and a bit like a sort of weird game show in a way. Uh, can you have a guess which are nationalist, which are socialist, and which are simply racist? 
So num point number one, by the way, don't worry, we're not going to have all the 25 points, that would be tedious. Point number one, we demand the union of all Germans into a greater Germany. What do you think? Well, in fact, yeah, that was a nationalist uh, aspiration. Although it's also sort of understandable as well in terms of self-determination. Point number two, we demand that Germany be treated in the same way as other countries, and we demand the annulling of the Treaty of Versailles. Again, a nationalist aspiration. Let's have a look at this one. Point four, only those who have German blood, regardless of creed, can be our countrymen. Hence, no Jew can be a countryman. Well, you wouldn't have to be Einstein, uh, a Jewish person who made a tremendous contribution to world science, to recognise that that one is absolutely racist. The Nazis, in fact, um, didn't invent this kind of racism. In fact, most of their ideas were already current in conservative right-wing circles. This is, in fact, perhaps the more alarming aspect, that they're not that different, but this, they managed to get power. So, obviously this is a misunderstanding of Darwin's theories of natural selection. Uh, misapplied, this whole idea of survival of the fittest, misapplied to this concept of races struggling in the world. Well, we've, we of course know that there are there is no biological ba basis for race. We are all children of Mother Africa, although I don't think Hitler would have agreed with me there. Next one, we agree, we demand that large industries share their profits with the workers. Well, that certainly seems to be rather socialist uh, point. Again, they're trying to appeal to the workers as well. We demand generous improvements in the old age pension system. Again, something of a left-wing socialist agenda item. Although uh, Hitler himself, really, he's very much more of a nationalist than a socialist. Um, and many of these socialist points are, are abandoned or minimised as the Nazis gain power. OK, so point 17. Here is an example, actually, of the flexibility and adaptability of the Nazis and how they're sometimes prepared to change their message in order to gain political power. So point 17, we demand a new law which will allow property to be confiscated without compensation if this is in the general interest of the nation. He's really trying to appeal to farmers there um, in order to you know, get gaining new land for farmers. However, uh, to many, uh, this really alarmed them, uh, especially sort of conservative right-wingers. They saw this as the sort of the first step to sort of communism or socialism. Uh, and in order to sort of appease or satisfy more conservative right-wing people worried about that, um, he made sure he clarified later on he'd only confiscate property owned by Jews. Charmingly racist gentleman there. OK, so moving on. Here's an extract from Mein Kampf in 1924. As national socialists, we see our programme in the flag. In the red, we see the social idea of our movement. In the white, the nationalist idea. And in the swastika, we see our mission to achieve the victory of Aryan man. I sort of really do feel sorry for um, Hindu people who, for whom the swastika is genuinely a message of uh, peace. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm not that much... I don't, I don't know that much about Hinduism, but if I was a Hindu, I'd, I'd be rather resentful of how the, the Nazis hijacked a, a symbol of my religion in the name of a, a vicious racism. So let's have a look at the membership of the Nazi party. Well, this certainly, as we've already said, they tried to appeal to all classes. They tried to be a Volkish party for, the, for, for, for all German people, and, and as long as you were, were not uh, one of the people they wanted to exclude, that is. Um, however, most of their support did come from the lower middle class, more sort of your shopkeepers and small businesses, people that were kind of suffering uh, in the early Weimar period through, through things like uh, department stores opening up, things like that. Very much a male-dominated, beer-swilling, authoritarian group. I mean, they often met in beer halls, for example. They were racist, anti-Semitic, anti-Jewish people, and also anti-intellectual. They didn't like the idea of... Um, it's sort of independence of thought. They were more stirred by ideas of passion and being united behind this sort of German mystical ideal. They did have the support of some in the elite, some managers, some academics, some in business, especially perhaps those who saw an opportunity with the Nazis to combat communism. So, in summary, they started life as the German Workers' Party in 1919. In 1920, the Nazis came up with their 25-point plan, a mixture of nationalism, uh, sort of socialist ideas and racist ideas and Hitler took over the party in 1921 outmaneuvering Anton Drexler and they were quite adaptable they were trying to appeal to both the left and right but they would change their message as they saw fit okay I hope that was useful